Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Philip Erdley. I work in, in applied research in our networks team. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce our next session on intent based networking and DevOps, uh, where we've got two speakers, uh, Ning Wang and Harris Rossos. Uh, so, intent and DevOps are, are two key approaches to help automate our network and enable faster deployment of new services and network capabilities. Uh, so they look you know, pretty uh, crucial for BT's future. Uh, so Ning Wang, Ning is um, professor in networks at Surrey University in the Institute for Communication Systems. Uh, his research in interests include things like future internet design and network intelligence. Um, and our other speaker is Harris Rotsos. So Harris is a lecturer in computer networks and networked systems at Lancaster University. So his research interests are, include things like uh, network orchestration and program, um, pro programmability, cloud operating systems, and the role of open source projects. So over to you guys. Uh, so good morning, everybody. Um, thank you very much for um, uh, attending this presentation. So in this presentation, we're going to kick off um, initially with an introduction into the concept of intent-based networking and how it relates to automation. And um, we're going to give you some uh, insights on how we ended up with intent-based networking as a concept and also um, some use cases and a blueprint on how we can actually build intent-based uh, networking systems um, uh, to control uh, network infrastructures. Uh, we will then focus a bit some of the um, ongoing research efforts within the project. So we're going to be discussing uh, our work on intent capturing and intent testing and monitoring and how we are adopting DevOps approaches to actually deliver some of these capabilities. And then uh, my uh, colleague, Professor Wang, will um, lead the discussion, discussing how, how uh, intents can be used to manage heterogeneous 5G infrastructures and also elaborate on some of our future uh, directions. So um, intent-based networking um, is um, an approach that tries to simplify uh, the task of network configuration management. This is a critical process, which can be also extremely um, uh, complicated in modern infrastructures. And it's effectively the secret source of networking. So uh, without network configuration, um, infrastructures are pretty dumb and they're the main way to deliver services. So um, network configuration, though, um, is a, a complex uh, topic. Um, what we call traditional configuration management and what is predominantly available right now in uh, devices and adopted widely by large network providers is the idea where um, effectively you have an administrator that communicates with users and uh, company managers, collects goals, and then sits uh, on their desk and effectively try to design in pen and paper how they can translate goals into actual configuration. This approach typically then requires from the user to log in to, to, to the administrator to log into the different networking devices of the infrastructure and configure then the policy by using low level specifications like the one that we have here. So effectively the packets for this specific subnet should go through this port. Uh, this has two main challenges. So the first one is that human intervention is essential and that slows down thing. And the second thing is that because configuration is distributed, that means that they that, that, that can be an error prone process. Configuration spread across multiple devices, mistypes are a common thing and things uh, are not always guaranteed to go well. Now, one approach that has been adopted in recent years by several vendors is the idea of policy based network management, where basically inside their configuration languages, they enable features that allow to express policy. Policy can be expressed in the form of um, um, uh, statements, where statements uh, would describe uh, specific conditions and when they occur, how the system would independently adapt its configuration in order to um, address an emerging issue. Uh, so the process doesn't change drastically between the traditional and the policy-based approach. Still, the administrator needs to manually define uh, some of the policy rules and also how the system should be adapted. 
but um, the interaction of the administrator with the actual um, um, infrastructure is reduced because a lot of uh, the changes are already baked into the configuration. Now, intent-based networking then tries to address some of these challenges, and the main design philosophy is you decouple what exactly is the goal of the user or the administrator or the manager from actually how we deliver these things. And a very intelligent system can translate the goals that have been defined based on the conditions of the network into the actual final configuration. Um, so um, a typical examples of how we can define intents is here where basically we just define what is your condition and then the automatic system would effectively deliver um, this functionality over time until you revoke this intent. Now, why intents are important then, right? And there are two main benefits in intents. The fact that they can uh, capitalize on automation and the, that the fact that they can also improve heterogeneity support in the management of the network. In recent years, we have seen the emergence of several new technologies like software defined networking, as well as vendors adopting uh, new approaches and developing custom management tools that they enable uh, extensive automation. The biggest challenge we have though with these systems is that they um, effectively provide automation primitives, but they don't actually have built-in capabilities to achieve uh, automatic management and automation in the management of the network. Uh, the current approach is we can use scripting tools to take advantage of these technologies and improve a bit our automation, but that tends to be very domain specific. Um, it's not easily generalizable and there's also a lot of coding involved. So intent-based networking effectively by design tries to take advantage of the automation available through these technologies and enable some added value features like self-adaptiveness. Uh, and the cool thing with IBM is that if you couple that also with sufficient knowledge, it can even give you the ability to um, uh, achieve uh, autonomic uh, behavior where basically you can sit back and just let the system work for you. Uh, so, um, who can express intents then? So, um, just to, 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 to um, carry on a bit the discussion, it's useful maybe to discuss some use cases and who actually can consume intents. And the basic, uh, the, the first order um, response would be everybody can use intents to control uh, the system. So, it's, it's, a, it's a framework which is designed to support many different ways of interaction in the management of the network. So the predominant and the first class users would be network operators and they can use intents effectively to define, uh, to simplify the management and the configuration of the network and they can easily um, uh, use intent frameworks to express um, requirements like service protection or identify specific optimization requirements. But intents can also be opened up to uh, end users or external um, uh, entities. So uh, vertical service providers or enterprise networks or end users, they can use intents to express the requirements in terms of connectivity properties like latency or bandwidth, or define also how they're going to use the network and define mobility patterns, for example, in order to allow them to use uh, the, the resource in a more efficient way. A, a lot of the research that currently goes on in intents primarily focuses on this service specification Within NGCDI, we're trying to explore also additional dimensions where we want to see how intents can be used to um, encapsulate internal business processes in an ISP and um, uh, allow uh, further automation in the management of the system as a whole. Uh, so before um, describing some of the work that we have been doing, it's useful first to establish uh, a basic architecture on how intent systems, intent-based networking systems work and some of the processes that they exist inside them. So typically an intent system consists of three layers. So you have the user, which is the end user or the administrator, the intent layer, which is responsible to actually apply the intelligence and translate intents into infrastructure configurations, the actual configuration, which is basically our infrastructure and any interface that they expose. And then you have a knowledge layer, which is there to assist um, uh, uh, the, the intent layer to make better decisions. 
And this can contain monitoring information, for example, from the system, uh, repositories of information about the infrastructure, or it can even have models like the ones that Idris, for example, um, uh, described earlier. And Ajit also uh, has some very interesting work uh, that can be uh, included in the knowledge layer. So in order now for intent systems to work, there are three main loops. So the first one is between the user and the intent, where basically the intent system tries to capture what exactly is the requirement uh, of the user, what are the requirements. Uh, and then the intent layer goes through the second loop, which basically uh, tries to identify how to best fulfill the user requirements given the current state of the system um, and define a deployment plan. This plan then gets pushed into the infrastructure using um, existing open interfaces and APIs. Um, and then the infrastructure itself pushes back monitoring information that describe how the deployment worked. Um, the intent layer then can validate that. And if things, if a specific intent is not fulfilled, then it can go through a, a redeploy process. And then we have a third uh, process, which basically uh, uh, the reports back monitoring information from the infrastructure to the user, which the user can use then to decide how to best deploy things. So um, going into uh, some of the uh, uh, specific details now of the work we have been doing. So the first goal that we set out is how can we make intents more accessible? Intent systems, they rely on models. Uh, these models have specific syntax and semantics, and a user needs to be very precise when it describes an intent. Um, they look a bit like programming languages. Now, as we can imagine, this can be rather challenging for non-technical users. And we are exploring how new interface systems can be included in the process to allow users to become part of the loop. In parallel, a long-term goal we have is trying to explore whether we can use intents to model specific interactions within the process, model specific human-to-machine interfaces, and um, see how we can later this can be uh, become part of the automation and redefine a bit the internal pipelines of the um, of the provider. Uh, so uh, just to give you a brief idea then of the work and we're going to have like a full demo later on. Uh, for our system, we have developed um, a, a, a multi-stage pipeline where basically we're using off the self open source tools like Dialogflow, OSM and Onos. And we're able to analyze um, user input, engage in a discussion with the user uh, to refine what it's requiring. And once everything, um, once the user has converged to a specific requirement, we can then deploy the intents into the actual infrastructure uh, using open source tools like OSM uh, and Onos. Um, uh, uh, for, for our current implementation, we have already built support for three uh, intents, which derive from discussions we had with um, BT engineers, BT Global, uh, several um, uh, peers within BT. Uh, so the first one that we currently support is a reroute intent, which basically can be used by potentially a site engineer to drain traffic before uh, a, an upgrade uh, of a device. Um, we have a service protection intent, which basically allows um, a, a manager to effectively forbid any changes in the configuration of the network during major events like the Olympics in order to avoid any QoS uh, uh, impact. And we also have um, a, a, an intent where basically we're trying to uh, automate the process of uh, upgrading an actual router device. And this is a scenario which basically tries to involve both human to machine interfaces and machine machine to interfaces. Uh, now, um, moving on now, um, so the second uh, topic that we have been exploring in our, um, in our research on intents is the topic of how can we effectively test and monitor intents. And um, this can be a, also a wider problem about testing and monitoring network configuration. It's not only isolated to intents. Uh, so the big problem we have right now in existing systems is that um, network configuration um, typically um, covers multiple devices, um, uh, can refer to multiple vendors um, and uh, services. And as a result, it's rather difficult to reason whether a specific configuration setup actually delivers the goals that we have that we, that we require. Furthermore, also when we deploy stuff in the in the real network, it's again difficult to reason about the performance of a specific configuration because a lot of the monitoring depends on what's available. So we would use SNMP counters and NetFlow data to try to infer at a later stage whether our configuration was effective. 
So this creates a problem um, for network operators because pushing out um, new updates becomes a challenge and it takes some time in order to verify that everything will be working fine. Now, a similar problem has emerged also in the cloud computing uh, community. And in order to address these challenges, they have adopted an approach which we typically refer to as DevOps or CI/CD. And effectively what they have done is they have created these large pipelines which test the code before rolling it out at multiple stages to validate whether actually any code changes um, um, break the system. If all the testing goes well, then the code can be transmitted into, can be uh, loaded on the production system. And then precise monitoring is used to ensure that the system is working well and the health of the service um, is at a high standard. Uh, so this gives them the opportunity whenever they have a bug fix, for example, to reach production within minutes. Uh, now, um, that's a very interesting concept, but if we want to adopt that in networking, we need to cover several requirements. So, for example, we have bespoke hardware, which is not easy to, um, um, it's not software, um, it's, it's bespoke hardware, so we need to have extra considerations on how we can emulate something like that. And also for networking, we need to rethink a bit how we actually do the monitoring at this stage. So uh, later on in the demonstration, we're going to be presenting two systems. The one is called NEAT, um, uh, which basically uh, provides an holistic platform um, which can be used to realize the first stage of testing. So effectively, um, systems can, um, developers can define the configuration, define a topology and some testing requirements, and the system automates the process of validating whether that's, that configuration is valid or not. And we have uh, incorporated in our NIT system multiple technologies, also including uh, unique NL-based uh, micro VNFs. We have support for legacy devices like Cisco routers and support also for VNFs uh, and PNFs. And then when we go into production, uh, we also have developed, uh, uh, we're developing a system which is called Uniprobe, which basically tries to use intent input to design a very precise monitoring service for any deployed configurations by using also lightweight cloud OS operating systems like Unicraft, we're able to spin up monitoring capabilities and deliver monitoring at a very precise level. So at this stage, I will hand over uh, the presentation to my colleague, uh, Professor Wang, to discuss also how intents can be used in the 5G environment. Yeah, thank you, Harris. Uh, yeah, basically now uh, I'd like just to uh, put this intent-based network management in the context of 5G. Uh, uh, Surrey has been uh, working on this for um, uh, uh, quite a few years. So uh, especially I'd like just to uh, introduce how this kind of uh, intent-based network management can be uh, using network slicing management. So uh, basically network slicing is, is a new concept in 5G, uh, meaning a, a, a tailored network capability that can be uh, engineered to uh, to support a, a group of services with common requirements. Uh, but if you look at the 5G infrastructure itself, it basically consists of a, a wide range of, let's say, elements, in, including the radio access network, the transport, and also the core, where um, uh, the, the, the majority of the IT uh, facilities are, uh, are embedded. Uh, so in terms of uh, the intent, basically from the ISP's point of view or mobile operator's point of view, basically uh, the the end-to-end -end service assurance is the, probably the the the, uh, the, uh, the major sort of intent in order to fulfill the requirements from uh, from customers on, on individual slices. But meanwhile, in order to let's say um, minimize the capex opex, uh, the the operator would also need to uh, uh, have the intent to uh, perform some sort of um, resource optimization, including energy efficiency and also in terms of risk awareness and mitigation uh, there must be a, 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 a mechanism in place to uh, to prevent these um, uh, anomalies from uh, happening. Yeah, so uh, as I just mentioned, um, uh, 5G consists of heterogeneous sort of uh, uh, network segments. Uh, so if you look at the local, um, let's say, um, management intent, uh, because of the uh, different types of assets, uh, we can certainly uh, envisage uh, there could be um, different, very different, uh, let's say, intents or objectives to, to manage. For instance, in, in the RAN side, basically, we can look at, uh, let's say, uh, spectrum efficiency, energy efficiency, interference avoidance, while at the 5G transport, we can look at the low balancing. We could be very different from uh, the, the, the intent 
um, uh, from the run side. And last but not least, we look at the uh, the, the intents. Uh, the, the the local intent uh, from the 5G core and basically as you can see uh, it can involve a lot of let's say uh, resource uh, resource optimization intent um, uh, especially giving the uh, 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 virtual network function um, uh, placement migration etc so so these uh, basically uh, 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 give us a, a very uh, a big technical challenge and that is how you can harmonize those local intent from different network, uh, network um, uh, uh, control intelligence in order to, uh, let's say, uh, achieve some sort of global uh, optimality. And in terms of 5G, uh, there has been uh, existing mechanisms, uh, especially in terms of end-to-end um, uh, -end orchestration that can take into account the local intent uh, you know, uh, and oversee the overall uh, conditions in order to uh, achieve this. So currently, uh, at Surrey, we, uh, we start from the uh, local intent optimization from the 5G core network, and now we start to integrate the, uh, the, the intent uh, from the uh, transport, for instance, um, bandwidth location uh, traffic engineering and how this can be combined with the resource op optimization intent um, uh, from the uh, uh, from the core side, and also uh, uh, um, uh, thanks to five G, basically we have uh, we, we can uh, leverage the capability of network slicing to provide uh, service differentiation to uh, heterogeneous uh, uh, applications. Uh, that's the a uh, good side of the story. Uh, but if you look at the service management uh, side, basically uh, currently uh, how you sell these kind of services is still based on uh, some uh, rigid uh, service level agreement, which is supposed to uh, define uh, fixed uh, performance values. But now if you look at the uh, today's applications, an uh, end user can have very high flexibility of uh, uh, um, expressing uh, individual intent even on the fly in the middle of the session. Okay, so after a while, I'll give you a few examples just to, uh, just to uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, let's say, um, justify this kind of uh, situation. So now the situation is, uh, how can the network intelligence uh, 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 infer or respond to the user intent, uh, which could be expressed on the fly in order to change its behavior, in order to cater for this kind of changed situation. And these kind of user intent scenarios could include, uh, for instance, mobility or, uh, or the, the intent of changing service requirements. Um, for instance, a change of content resolution levels, is especially giving the, uh, the, 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 the either the conventional video delivery or um, the immersive extended reality applications like holographic teleportation content. Yeah, so here, uh, this slide basically shows three examples uh, where uh, uh, intent could be expressed by uh, end users of the network. Uh, so the first one is uh, video analytics. Uh, for instance, if you, uh, if an uh, organization is uh, deploying this kind of, uh, for instance, traffic surveillance, uh, um, in general, uh, the camera only captures the overall situation along a road or an area. But it, in some events, then basically, uh, um, the user will need to zoom in to a specific object uh, and then the video analytics function could, could migrate from the uh, centralized cloud to more edge uh, based infrastructure uh, um, in order to speed up or, or, or localize such kind of, such kind of content. So uh, once this kind of a user has expressed this kind of uh, application layer uh, intent, how does the network uh, uh, let's say um, seamlessly migrate such kind of um, uh, uh, tasks or jobs on the fly uh, from different locations? Okay. Uh, the, uh, the the second one is uh, user mobility. For instance, if a user wants to, let's say, um, have a continuous service uh, during a journey, which is intended, and then basically it may involve the the, the seamless handover from the service point, for instance, from the mobile edge uh, computing server on the left side. Um, uh, 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 the, through some sort of, let's say, uh, um, dynamic network conditions. For instance, you can you may uh, uh, go through a, a tunnel without any service. And then how does the network uh, uh, support such kind of dynamic, um, let's say, user mobility or location, for instance, prefetch some uh, 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 video segment uh, before the end user goes into the tunnel, for instance. Okay, uh, last but not least, we look at the uh, holographic teleportation, which we will present in this, uh, um, this afternoon. So uh, this is a sort of, let's say, six, uh, what we call six degree of freedom uh, uh, extended uh, reality application, where, where, you, where, you, uh, where the goggle 
uh, you can see the objects or hologram from different uh, uh, distances. If you are if you are very far away from that object, then basically the corresponding resolution does not need to be that high, and the bandwidth is quite uh, on a, a, a relatively low side. For instance, less than uh, 30 or even 20 megabits per second. But if the viewer wants to have a closer look of the hologram and by walking close to it, then immediately the bandwidth requirement will be uh, will be increased substantially uh, over uh, um, several hundred megabits per second, and that will require the network to have a very uh, prompt and accurate uh, response to such kind of user intent uh, during the, in the middle of an application. Yeah, so for this uh, um, uh, uh, purpose, we built this kind of um, flexible uh, SRV6, that is uh, a segment routing over IPv6 platform uh, that has the intelligence at the edge to detect the user mobility intent uh, in the middle of, an, uh, uh, for instance, tele a telepresence or teleportation session in order to, uh, let's say, switch the content delivery path from uh, the original thin path to a fat path of, uh, from one level slice to another uh, network slice in order to cater for such kind of um, substantial service requirements. So again, uh, we would uh, uh, show our working progress demo uh, this afternoon. Yeah, so overall, we see uh, a very wide range of uh, 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 research challenges in the context of uh, uh, IBN. Okay, starting from basic, uh, let's say, um, uh, 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 requirement, uh, that is how to express uh, uh, intent to the highest degree of flexibility, uh, and, and especially mimicking human languages, for instance, and also by taking into account different types of um, clients, either the operators or end, uh, end users or uh, external service providers, how they can um, let's express intent in a common uh, sort of uh, interface. And also, uh, how do we um, design and develop a specific translation um, mechanism to translate high-level uh, intent into specific network uh, um, uh, uh, configurations, uh, even on the fly, for instance, um, in the middle of a service session. And also by taking into account the uh, dynamic or, or even uncertain network environment, and also the, uh, the, the on-demand service request change, how can we provide a short service uh, um, uh, that 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 is also a very big challenge. And last but not least, uh, uh, in the distributed network environment, we also look at uh, the uh, the local intent versus global intent. And between local intent, we could uh, we could have uh, let's say uh, intent conflicts. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the ecosystem, uh, especially, for instance, in the 5G environment, we have different network segments, and each of them could um, uh, uh, express different types of intent. How can we harmonize those, uh, um, uh, let's say, local intent in order to achieve global optimality or win-win situation? That is also a direction to, to be investigated. So, so yeah, so basically this is just a, a very uh, brief uh, uh, um, uh, a reminding uh, of everyone to, to, to attend the two parallel sessions of demos in the afternoon. So overall, uh, we see uh, intent-based networking is a very powerful enabling technology for network automation, not in terms of, um, uh, let's say, uh, business, uh, um, uh, business intent from the uh, uh, telecom operators, in terms of network configuration, in terms of resource optimization, but also from the uh, over the top uh, external clients or customers or even end users. Uh, so in order to, let's say, dynamically or seamlessly uh, um, uh, cater for different or changing, uh, uh, um, uh, um, let's say, service requirements uh, against dynamic uh, uh, environment. So uh, again, uh, so we will you see more uh, uh, in more details the demos uh, this afternoon in room 3A and 3B. Yeah, uh, that's all from us, actually. Thank you.